But unlike any other planet in the solar system, besides Earth, Mars has all of the fundamentals needed to make this possible. Its 24 hour and 37 minute day is critical for growing plants. It has all of the elements necessary for creating building materials like plastics, metals and glass. And it has oceans of water frozen into the soil. If we can develop this craft of living on Mars, then Mars becomes inhabitable. Not immediately physically, but intellectually. I mean, look, what determines whether an environment is habitable or not? Is Colorado habitable? We're not naturally adapted to live in Colorado. We're tropical animals. No one could survive a single winter night here without technology, such as clothing, efficient use of fire. We invented our way into becoming people that could colonize such hostile environments. Eventually, with a lot of ingenuity and invention, the scientists will learn to live off the land. They will grow crops in the iron-rich but potassium-poor soil. And they will produce oxygen and energy from the water and atmosphere. Sooner or later, children will be born, the first true Martians. They will grow up to see Mars as their home. With time, more and more people will arrive. These won't only be scientists, but settlers, people who plan to stay. They may come for all kinds of reasons, but to them, Mars will be a chance to start over, to build a new life for themselves. The well of human social thought is not exhausted by the present age, and I don't think we'll ever be exhausted. There will always be people with new ideas on how humans should live together. With Mars so far away, the hold of Earth governments on their colonies will be tenuous. The Martians will need to govern themselves. Mars is not going to be a utopia. Mars is going to be a lab. It's an open frontier. It's a place where things are going to be tried out. I think we'll see a lot of noble experiments on Mars. Perhaps some of these Martian colonies with their novel ideas based on the best thought the 21st century has to offer, maybe they'll find ways in which humans create society that are more humane and offer more opportunity for human potential. The ultimate dream of the Martians will be to terraform their planet, to make Mars as hospitable as Earth. This may not be as big a fantasy as it seems. Here we are on Earth, a world that's very sophisticated and developed and complete. And anything we do is just a subtraction it's because we live in such a biologically rich planet. When we go to Mars, we have an opportunity that we don't have on Earth. Here's a planet that's died. Here's a world that's not full of biology, probably doesn't have any at all. Well, there, we can actually do something to help. Once there are large human settlements on Mars that have significant industrial capability, we could actually start addressing ourselves to the question of transforming the Martian environment itself, terraforming Mars, as it's called, because Mars was once a warm and wet planet, and it could be made so again through human engineering efforts. With daytime temperatures in the Martian tropical zone, averaging around zero degrees centigrade, and with an atmosphere only 1% as thick as Earth's, exposure to these elements by a human without a spacesuit would be instantly fatal. The first step to terraforming Mars and bringing it back to life will be for the Martian colonists to warm up their planet. Well, we know how to warm up planets. We're doing it on Earth by putting gases in the atmosphere. On Earth, it's not a good idea to warm up the planet. The temperature was just fine, thank you. We don't need it any warmer here. But in principle, if you could trap the sunlight reaching Mars today, every single photon that's hitting Mars, Mars would warm up in about 10 years. Well, obviously, you can't trap every single photon that's hitting Mars, but you can trap about 10% of them with the greenhouse effect. So that would imply that Mars could warm up in about 100 years. Well, 100 years is a long time, but it's not astronomically long. 
One idea is to build small, automated factories that produce super greenhouse gases with no ozone depleting side effects. Although these gases would be unwelcome on Earth, for the Martians, they would be an efficient way to trap heat. Then within a few decades, we would raise Mars by more than 10 degrees centigrade. And if you did that, that would cause massive amounts of carbon dioxide that is currently absorbed into the Martian soil to start to outgas. Carbon dioxide is also a natural greenhouse gas. As it builds up in the atmosphere, more and more heat will be trapped, which will in turn cause more CO2 to outgas. The process will become automatic, and as the atmosphere thickens, Mars will eventually reach a state of equilibrium and stay warm naturally. The rise in air pressure would mean that the human colonists could discard their pressure suits and walk around the surface of Mars carrying only a supply of oxygen. And as the temperatures rise on Mars, water frozen into the soil will begin to melt out. And for the second time in its history, Mars would have liquid water on its surface. Dry Martian rivers will start to flow. Seas will rise. And there will be rain clouds in the skies. The return of Mars to its warm and wet stage will make it a fertile environment for life. Any indigenous Martian organisms lying dormant will begin to grow, and Mars will be full of Martians. If no native life emerges, or well, that life is all dead, then humans could begin addressing the idea of bringing life from Earth. At first, it would be simple organisms, perhaps genetically engineered, that would thrive in the Martian environment. Then more complex plants could be introduced. The plants would be right at home in the carbon dioxide atmosphere, and with no competition and a whole planet to cover, they could transform Mars into a green world. Warming Mars so that it sustains life is rapid, but then the slow process of making the atmosphere breathable for humans and animals starts, and that's done by plants. Although the process will happen naturally, if the colonists can't find a quicker way, it will take tens of thousands of years. This is a philosophical debate. Many people think the universe has a big sign on it that says, do not touch. Leave it alone, it was made this way. It is not in our purview as human beings to change anything. I can respect that view, although I disagree with it. I think the universe has a big sign on it that says, go forth and spread life. Because when I look around the universe, I think life is the most amazing thing we see. It is just incredible. And we human beings are uniquely positioned to help spread life from this little tiny planet, which it seems to have started on, beyond. And that's our gift. Earth's gift to the universe, I think, is the gift of life. for terraforming Mars is based on 20th century notions of engineering. I don't think it is how Mars will actually be terraformed. What you have here is a 20th century mind trying to address a 22nd century problem. And so I think Mars will be terraformed by the 23rd century, not by the 33rd, by the 23rd. 
things that would seem utterly fantastical to us is how it will actually be done. But it'll be done. We're at a crossroads today. We either muster the courage to go or we risk the possibility of stagnation and decay. The exploration of the solar system and expanding of life through the rest of our solar system and, and someday beyond is the kind of thing that will keep our civilization going. We're explorers by nature. Eventually, we will go to the stars. And the question is, when will we start? I think a manned Mars mission could happen uh, within 15 years. Some days, I'm very optimistic. I think we can do it in 10, maybe 15 years. Other days, I see the, all the political things that go into the space program. I look back on the 30 years we've been bogged down, and I, and I get more negative about it, and I say it's going to be another three decades or four decades. Yeah, I would be surprised if we got to Mars prior to uh, 2025 or 2030. Uh, in May of 2018. Understanding the various political obstacles that exist and what we need to fight through to get the program started, I believe that we will be on Mars by 2020. You have to believe in hope. You have to believe in the future. There are more and more people coming around to the point of view that a positive future for humanity requires human expansion to space. We will eventually break through the forces of inertia that have been holding this thing back.